Hello and good day. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Anthony Winston. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm Tony. All right, got a new microphone here. Um, a friend loaned it to me. It's a Neumann. I think it costs about $500 or $400. I don't know. I'll try not to drop it, Barry. Um, anyway, uh, we'll see how it sounds. Uh, I tried it on some vocals the other day, and you know, I'm, it's definitely got a different sound than the uh, AKG that I was using. And I'm not sure if I like it better or not. It's just uh, different. So what can I say? Um, and I got a pair of these microphones uh, to try to record the uh, piano for my uh, album that's coming up. I'm going to drop an album. Yeah. I'll show you how to drop an album here. Here's an album. Oh, I dropped it. It's a pretty good album, too, if you don't know this album. Oh, man. <laughs> Vinnie's, he's the guy. Driving slow from bar to bar In my friend's new company car Through the back streets Where the land meets the river All right, um, copyright has been, you know, playing havoc with my channel lately. Uh, I think uh, YouTube has kind of put some new software into use to track down copyright offenders. At any rate, it seems like I'm sharing a lot of the uh, revenue from these videos, and that's okay, you know, it's not a, <laughs> half a nothing is nothing. Um, so, um, on some of these tutorials, I'm going to try really not to play the song, and I'll put up another video uh, with just the song, and they can hit that one with the copyright. And most people watch the tutorial anyway, not the actual performance. We've got um, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered by Rogers and Hart. And let's take a look at the chords. And let's see. You know, <laughs> so many people say, oh, this shit goes right over my head. And, uh, you know, I don't want that to be the case. And I've put out a lot of videos that really deal with the basics, you know, where I show you how to find seventh chords and diminished chords and things like that. Um, so I'm assuming you have some of that knowledge uh, already. And uh, so here we go. Uh, first chord, C. And, you know, a jazz tune, usually that means a C6 or maybe even a C major seventh. But more often than not, it means a a C sixth. In fact, it's so common to do that that sometimes in a uh, like a, a jazz tune like this, if they really just want a C triad, they'll write C and then write the word pure after it. So a pure C major. All right, so let's go ahead and add the six to it. And then um, we've got C sharp diminished. And a diminished chord, as you may know, is built with minor thirds. So you can go like this. gives you C sharp diminished. D minor seventh. <laughs> Somebody came to visit me. Come here, Leo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he hears me start to play and he just comes running down. It's pretty cool. All right, anyway, C, a C sharp diminished. D minor seventh. Easy one. And then here's D sharp diminished. Okay, so you see it's evenly spaced minor thirds, and that's what makes the uh, diminished chord um, so um, and I wish I had the right word. Anyway, many things springeth, springeth forth. Many things springeth forth from the diminished chord. You can do, I mean, they are really kind of can operate as seventh chords, uh, dominant seventh chords, and of course the diminished scale comes from them, and just many other kind of patterns and symmetrical things that you can do. Like for instance, you can do um, something like, you know, all those four chords right there were based on the diminished chord. And uh, let me show you that. You can go, uh, all right, and then. Those are some things that can be constructed from the diminished chord. But let's just stick to the chords here. Once again, from the top C, C sharp diminished, D minor seventh, D sharp diminished, and here we have a C with an E in the bass, and I'm going to uh, interpret that as C sixth, 
And with the E in the bass, it just means I'm doing an inversion of the chord with E on the bass. Then E dominant seventh. You know, dominant chords, you can often just leave out the five. It helps keep them from being too stable. A dominant chord is unstable in that it wants to go someplace. It usually wants to go to A minor, but now it's going to F major seventh, and then F sharp diminished, which is, we just had a D sharp diminished, so it is actually the same chord, but you know, it sounds a little different because we have a different note on the bottom. And then we get to C with a slash G, and you know, that's gonna be a C chord with G on the bottom, and I'll add the sixth again. All right, next uh, chord is questionable. All right, we got the D7. Uh, a common way of doing it is make that that diminished chord again, the D sharp diminished, and then go to D minor seventh, and then G seventh, and then right back to D minor seventh again. Uh, nice to put a little passing chord in here. Okay, that's kind of like a tritone substitution but not, it's more than that really. And then we're going down to G7. Or just D minor twice and G7 as an inversion there. Okay, now, if you get these chords going, you can actually use them as part of the blues. See there, I got the F. four measures of the blues. So I like to teach this song to my students and then, you know, say, hey, why don't you try those chords in the blues? All right, now the second time we come through the ending and let's take it from the C slash G, like this, and we'll use that diminished chord. Oh, sorry. And then there's a C7 in parentheses. That means just do it the second time go to the second ending. E minor, okay, so that's F major, then E minor, and A seventh. Now look, that looks like a diminished chord, but I'm using it as an A seventh. Here's A seventh, root, third, fifth, seventh. Move the root up to the flat nine, and it becomes a diminished chord. The bass player can su supply the A. Or really, you know, our modern 20th, 20th century ears, 21st century now, ears, we, we don't need that bass note. We can hear that it's E minor, A7, D minor. We just, we've heard enough things like that before that we just understand it. Now, it has just says D minor here. We could play D minor seventh. The melody note would be the 13th there. So we could also make it a D minor six. And I think I would prefer that here. All right. Oh, four, uh, you know, two measures of D minor sixth. It's a little boring, so let's do something with it. Okay. All right, now you can impress your friends with this term. Contrapuntal elaboration of static harmony. It simply means take a chord and fuck around with one of the notes. All right, so move the fifth up like this. All right, now where was I? And do the same thing on A minor. All right, now D minor seventh seems good. All right. And then we've got, uh, you know, a three, six, two, five, one. That's the E minor, the A, it says sharp nine. And you know, this is a kind of a tough part of the song if you're just a beginner and you play this, and then you play the A seventh, and you think, well, that doesn't sound right. Or maybe you play it this way. And you think, hmm, I don't know. But you know, if you use an open voice, like a, a sp well, I don't know, people call them spread voicings. I don't know, I just don't like that terminology. 
open voicing, all right? Keep your spread for something else. Uh, if you spread the voicing, <laughs> Like that, maybe, all right? So you got. Now it sounds okay. And you can make it sound better, too, maybe by going. Uh, I don't know. We're really just, even if you just play the A7, like this, and leave out the uh, fifth, like that. Now, if you invert it, it just doesn't sound as good. It kind of needs to be in that. Because, you know, when you have something that's kind of unclear, you know, having the root on the bottom makes a lot of sense. If it's real obvious, like a 2-5-1 going to C here, we could go do something like that and it sounds okay. But here, I think you need to put the root on the bottom of the A chord. And then we're back to the same thing again. Up to E, F, F sharp. Bewitched, bothered, and you go to the D7 and then D minor, but that, that diminished chord really works better. All right, now it says C6. Why did I go to something different? It's called a surprise chord ending. You know, you can pick any chord that, that you know, the melody note sounds good with and, and use it. that you kind of set yourself up for one of these things now um, you know I'll forever be influenced by Nancy Wilson on this tune and I don't know if it's this tune or maybe something else on the album, but she does a nice little cycle of fifth thing. Thing It sounds just like, you know, you're practicing major seventh chords through the cycle of fifths, but she'll do something like this. Oh, how did she do it? Oh, yeah. Hit the melody note and then come in with like... major seventh, see C major seventh, F major seventh, just going through the cycle of fifths, exactly the same chord every time, it's really a major ninth, and you know, on the, on the last one, the penultimate chord, the D flat, you know, maybe a slightly more exotic um, uh, chord voice, so you get something like... That's all for now, folks. As always, I appreciate you subscribing. Uh, and uh, I never seem to get very many comments. Maybe that's because I don't talk directly to you. So a good day. And please leave a comment and one of these on my channel. I thank you ever so much. And I'll see you again real soon. Thank you.